Hello photography students, welcome back to the virtual classroom. This week we are discussing the importance of mid-range photographs and quality close-up images. So this week we're going to examine these concepts um, in detail and you're also going to get to practice taking some of these photographs. Last week we learned that overall images show the future viewer, right, that's witnesses, uh, prosecutors, defense attorneys, the jury, the judge, okay, all of those guys, we're going to show them the general layout of the scene using overall images. And those images are important because they help the viewer become familiar with the scene and orient them. And that's true, they are important, but the most important images you'll take as a crime scene photographer are mid-range photographs. And there's a definition for you guys. Mid-range photographs are photographs that show the location of evidence in relation to fixed items in the scene. Okay, so let's look at why mid-range photographs are so important for crime scene investigation. Mid-range photographs are more than just medium-range shots, okay? They're important because they show the viewer where the evidence is located within the scene. So let's look at some examples. You remember this room, right? This was our overall shot of the bedroom from last week, and it shows, in general, what the room looks like. We're not telling the viewer to focus in on anything specifically. We're just showing that these are the items that are in the room. We see the bed. There's something on the bed. We can't really tell what it is quite yet. There's a bedside table, a lamp, some photographs, uh, a TV table or stand over on the right. There's something on top of that as well. We don't really know what that is yet. Okay, in this image, there are items of evidence that are important to the case, but the overall photographs don't highlight them. And in this case, one of them isn't even visible. And I'll show you guys um, what I mean by that in the next few slides. So here's the item. Here's another item. And there's an item over here, but we aren't showing it yet in the overalls, right? So let's see how we document that appropriately. Mid-range photographs show the viewer where you want them to focus their attention, and they also so show the relationship of the evidence to key parts of the scene. So now we've kind of zoomed in a little bit, or we've moved closer to this part of the room, right? Now you can see that object on top of the bed starting to take form a little bit. You can almost see the handle there. And the same with the item on the uh, television stand. Now there's a reason that I took this shot from this particular particular orientation. Okay, so we've got the knife on the left and the um, uh, what looks to be the television stand on the right. When you're taking your mid-range photographs and you want to show the relationship of the item to fixed points in the scene, you want to think about creating a triangle. So in this situation, the fixed point in the scene that I'm considering is the edge of the table, the edge of the television stand. And so I'm putting one point of my triangle there, one point of my triangle on top of the evidence that I'm focusing on, the knife, and then I'm at the other point of the triangle. The reason that we do this is to keep from um, creating distortion based on where we're standing in the scene. And you can see um, that concept explained more in your textbook for this week's reading. Um, but always be thinking about creating basically an isosceles triangle. This one isn't exactly isosceles, but an isosceles triangle is one where the sides are all of the same length, okay? Because you want to keep um, distortion from Items that are closer to you will appear bigger, and items farther away will appear larger. So we want to keep that distortion out of our mid-range photographs as much as possible. Now, here is a mid-range photograph that I'm taking just showing the knife in relation to the rest of the bed, right? The image before showed it in relation to the edge of the table, so we can get an idea as to how close that was. This one, it's showing it um, in relation to the bed. How is it towards the center? Is it towards the head of the bed? Is it towards the foot of the bed? So this mid-range is showing it in relationship to the other items surrounding it. Now, when you're taking your in situ, meaning unchanged, okay, or um, 
without being altered mid-range shots. You should end with a close-up shot of your evidence that's also in situ. So you can tell that this one, we haven't moved the knife at all, right? It's laying on top of that bedspread, which is that striped uh, green and blue color. So when you're taking your mid-range shots, you want to end them if you're focusing on the knife, that was our first item, we took mid-range shot showing it in relation to all of the items in the room. Now we're ending this mid-range series by taking a close-up of it. Okay, and this close-up is pretty good. It pretty much fills the frame and that's one of our cardinal rules, right? So you want to end your mid-range shot sequence with one close-up of the item of evidence filling the frame. Here, the evidence on the television stand is shown in relationship to the electrical sockets, okay? So if you're picturing that triangle, it's from the electrical sockets to the phone, the cell phone that's on top of that television stand, and then to me, the photographer. And here's a closer mid-range shot showing the same situation, but it's also showing how far the cell phone is in relation to the edge of the television, correct? There should always be a thought process behind every mid-range shot. So what are you trying to show? In this situation, I'm showing the entire television, including, oh, the, um, excuse me, the entire television stand, including the bottom part of the television and the cable box that it's sitting on in relationship to the evidence. So mid-range shots should always show you more. They should show you another relationship to the items surrounding the evidence that you didn't see from the overalls on, or from other mid-range shots. And here is the picture that we are ending our mid-range in situ shots with. We are taking a close-up photograph also in situ. So we know it's in situ because it's at the end of the mid-range shots. And it's also on the same background as the item was when we originally took our first overall and mid-range shots. Here's another mid-range photograph. Now, if you were considering that I'm using the triangle method, what's going to be important? Well, me as the photographer, I'm from the bottom of the screen, that's one point of the triangle. There's the knife evidence on the right hand side, so where would that other point of the triangle end up being? Well, in this situation, it would end up at the bedside stand, correct? So now I've told the viewer, focus in, focus in on this section of the room, so this is a mid-range shot all in itself because we're focusing in on an important item in the room, which is the, um, the bedside table there. And again, this shot is leading the, the viewer of the photographs to the area that we want them to focus on. And inside the drawer is our third piece of evidence, which is a 9mm handgun. So all of these shots showed you the sequence that I want you guys to be able to take for evidence shots in a basic crime scene. You had your overall shots from last week, and now we're moving into mid-range shots. We have our mid-range sequence. We haven't added anything to the scene. We are simply photographing the items in relation to the scene and in relation to each other. So once your in situ photographs have been taken, you can now add placards or evidence markers to the scene. And there are some templates that you guys can use to print out if you have a printer at home. I've uploaded them in doc sharing. So you can print these out and cut them out and use them as evidence placards for your mock scenes. Okay? And you want to think of the placards as little bullseyes. Okay? They can be added to your sequence to show the viewer where to focus. These numbers are also used to tie evidence to an identifier throughout the scene. So, for example, we're going to make the knife item number one. We're going to photograph it as item number one. When we collect it, most likely on the packaging, we're going to put item number one. If we end up impounding that into an evidence system, we'll call that number one. If we create a diagram showing um, the scene as a picture and we add in um, little numbers to show where items were collected from will also place a number one in that location on the diagram. So it's a way to remind your viewers and to remind people who are reviewing your case file 
what this number was, what this item was, what it was designated as. So this time, the knife's going to be designated as number one. And so they can follow it through the entire case sequence. And you can see they come in a bunch of different forms there. Um, the ones that are shown in the middle picture with 7, E, and A, B, those are the types that we use at um, the City of Phoenix Police Department, mainly because they're very handy. They have big, large numbers vertical on their vertical surface so that you can see them from pretty far away, like in an overall or a mid-range situation. And they also have the number on the horizontal plane along with an ABFO scale. Um, which is, you guys should have one in your little uh, CSI kits. The ABFO scales are, are really handy to show the uh, size of items of evidence. So the next sequence of shots should be mid-ranges with placards added. You want to use these shots to show the relationship between the items. Okay, so in this situation, we've gone back to doing a mid-range shot showing the relationship between item number one the knife to item number two, the cell phone, okay? And you'll notice in my photographs that I orient my placards so that they are facing the north, which is the left side of your screen. Usually it's easier to see this if you have a horizontal scale affixed to your placards, you know, it's part of your placard, so you can point that toward the north. One reason to do this is that if you're using your photographs to create a crime scene diagram, which most of us do, um, it's helpful to know which way you're oriented when you're looking at these items. So that is a very helpful um, little trick to get in the habit of, is pointing your placards towards the north. The other reason that this photograph is really important with the placards, um, and it's not very obvious in this example because it's pretty easy to remember, okay, the knife was on the bed and that was to the left or to the north of the television stand. That's pretty easy to see. But say you're taking photographs of a shooting scene and there are 87 casings laying across the roadway and all the roadway pretty much looks the same. If you add placards to your items, it will be much easier for you to see, oh, okay, item 74 was a little bit north and east of item number 73. That can be really important when you're checking your measurements and making sure that everything is accurate when you're creating a crime scene diagram. So a lot of crime scene photography is done with additional crime scene processes in mind when we, when we take these photographs. I use my photographs when I document crime scenes to uh, help me with notes, basically, remind me where everything was located, and so mid-range photographs become extremely, extremely important. Um, because if I just have a close-up of the knife, that doesn't tell me how, where it was in relation to the television stand, where it was in relation to the other items of evidence. Okay, So these placarded shots can be very, very important to the rest of your crime scene documentation process. So here we are, moving on again. We're doing our same sequence, right? We're doing our same mid-range sequence shots, but now we're doing it with the placards in place. And you want to end with a close-up shot showing at least part of the placard so that you can see what number it is. So we can see that this is a close-up. It's still in situ. It's still in the position that we originally found it, and we've marked it as item number one. Now, it's never a bad idea to remind the viewer of the orientation of the evidence. So this shot was already taken earlier on, right, before I moved in and, and took a close-up of the uh, knife. But it's never a bad idea to take this mid-range shot again to remind your viewer, okay, we just looked at the knife, now we're moving back to item number two. And item number two was the cell phone. So again, we're taking those mid-range shots, but we've added the placards to them now. And here's our final close-up, still in situ, but with the placard added. So we've now added something to the scene. So it's not original, but it's still in the original location that we found it. Now here's a very important shot, because remember, you're orienting the viewer. So we've gone back to the knife, and now we're including item number three, which you couldn't see from the overalls at all. And now we are highlighting that location for our viewer using the placards. Another mid-range shot showing where the gun is in relationship to the other items in the drawer. 
and the close-up shot showing it with the evidence placard listing it as item number three. So once you've completed your overalls, your mid-ranges, your close-ups, your mid-ranges with placards, and your close-ups with placards, you're now ready to move the item to get more informative close-up shots. So what you want to do is you want to use an altered background to tell your viewer that this item is no longer in situ. It's no longer where I found it in the scene. And it shows that you've now manipulated it. So in this situation, I moved it onto a different background, and I also flipped the knife over. Okay, I'm showing the reverse side of it. I kept the placard in the shot so that the viewer knows this is the same item that was on the stripe bed sheet that I showed you earlier in the scene, but now it's being moved to a different location. It has been altered from the scene so that I can show you other characteristics of that item. And as, as I mentioned before in uh, a couple slides back, several evidence markers and placards come with scales already, already attached to them, so that's very helpful. But if you don't have those, then what you can do is take another close-up shot, including a scale in your images. So that can also be very important to do. You want to use your altered background close-up shots to show the other sides of items and also small details. So in this situation, I've moved the cell phone onto the altered background. I've told the viewer, okay, this item is still number two. It's still the item that I found on the television stand, but now I'm moving it. It's out of the scene. It's in a different location, and I'm going to manipulate it so that I can show you different characteristics. So I can take a shot of the um, make or model of the phone. So there's a close-up of Samsung. The image in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen shows the reverse side of the cell phone, what the cell phone looks like on the back. And I'm also showing the internal component of the battery compartment, right? And there's a, a SKU number listed in there as well as a serial number. Items that have serial numbers should always be photographed prior, prior to packaging, if at all possible. Now, why is this? Well, because we want to keep the evidence as pristine as possible. So once we put it into a bag, even if it's a plastic bag, even if you can see through it, you're going to have to handle it. You're going to have to scrunch that plastic down to look at the serial numbers. So it's always a good idea to try to take as many photographs of the details on an item, like a serial number. Take as many photographs as you can prior to packaging so that you don't have to keep manipulating that item. Item. So here are some close-up shots to show the make and model of the gun, the serial number on the gun, and the reverse side of the gun showing other details. Okay. So to wrap it up, mid-range photographs are some of the most important photographs that you'll take on a scene. They show a couple different things. They show the relationship of the evidence to the scene itself. They show the relationship of the evidence to other evidence items within the scene. And they show the scene in a detailed, unaltered, in situ state. So when you take your mid-ranges, you're taking them before you've added anything. Remember, because we take the mid-range shots without the placards before we add the placards into the scene. And there are several series of mid-range and close-up shots that need to be taken. You need to take your mid-ranges without placards, ending with close-ups. You need to take your mid-range shots again, but this time with placards, ending with close-ups. And you need to take altered surface photographs uh, that are close-ups to show details of each item. So be sure that you review this video before you start your individual work assignments for this week, and be sure to email your instructor if you have questions.